Carter, right there from SLC, and Paul Hirschfeld. Oh, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Paul Meeker, pastor of our seniors somewhere in the house. There you go. That's great. Any other pastors in the that they should get any? Okay. So, I want to tell you, just to remind you why you're here. Not only do we always have a lake school every spring, but coming out of my sabbatical, we worked really hard here at SLC on a strategic plan, which was formulated um, partly out of looking at our growth areas, the places we need to grow, and also the places that we're really strong in. And one of the areas we're really strong in is we love education. And lay school's been a big part of that. So the idea then is to use what we're strong and we're passionate about to work on something that we need some work on. <laughs> and our natural church development surveys, and then also our all the work we did for our strategic plan said we need to work on a personal evangelism. That scary word, which is simply really sharing the good news. So, and we also need to work on our corporate evangelism. We have Alpha going on now, and we have other things that way. So, but I know that every congregation, all of us, me as an average Christian Lutheran person, I get like, you know, when I know it's time to talk about my faith with somebody, and I'm not in the pastor role, you know, because then it's okay, I guess. But, but when it's my neighbor next door, you know, it's like, so... So I'm so excited we're going to get some work um, on that. And I was so delighted to have Pastor Melanie Walshlager come and work with us for our high school. So let's welcome So I'm going to tell you that Pastor Melanie has served congregations in the Midwest before becoming our director of evangelical mission. Now this is a position that kind of comes from church-wide. So she's part of our synod staff, but she comes to us. The ELCA has how many directors of evangelical mission? 65. Mentioned? 65. So in one in each synod, I guess almost. Well, some of them are part-time. Yes. Yeah, and so. technically one which said we have two bishops that serve as their own director of evangelism. Melanie uh, had works in the new mission starts that we have in our synod. She also works, and I'm so excited about her work, um, on revitalization of congregations. Um, so uh, she helps build new mission starts, like I say, renewing congregations, providing stewardship assistance, and really she's, I think, at the heartbeat in our synod of really helping congregations uh, look at their mission and get a new sense of vitality. So um, that's such an important thing. So we are really gifted to have Melanie lead us through this time where we're looking at sharing our faith story and uh, so with that, I'm going to say a prayer and we'll turn things over to Melody. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Let this time be fruitful, helpful, because we want to share your love for us in Christ Jesus with all the world. And so we pray that you'll direct our time together. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Melody. Church 
Um, let our light shine. Uh, that's what I think of. Um, that song. This is a landmine. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bush. Oh no! Oh, no. I'm gonna let it shine. And uh, I always think of that baptismal pro promise. Uh, that's one of the things I miss about serving the church in this way is that I don't get to be a part of baptisms like I was when I was in the congregation. But um, when I used to baptize children or adults, would I um, hand the candle, let your lights shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. That was part of our liturgy uh, of the church where I served uh, with every baptized person. So uh, I think of evangelism of how do we let our lights shine? So how do you see us as Christians? As Christians, I think many in the world have to be Lutheran. How do you see us letting our light shine? <laughs> Pastor Paul. Walking the talk. Walking the talk of faith in some way. Okay? Yes. Sharing about God's grace. Sharing about God's grace. Good. Thanks. Serving others. Serving others. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm speaking at um, Lutheran Community Services next weekend. And it's one in 50. Americans has been served by Lutheran social services in some way. Uh, if you add in congregations that have feeding programs or uh, housing programs or uh, clothing programs or, or serve in any other way, it's a lot more like one in five. How else do we let our light shine? Go ahead. Showing up. Showing up at church? Or showing up where? Showing up. What were you envisioning? Yes, all of those. All of those? Showing up in disaster, showing up, okay? Showing up, that's letting our light shine. Go ahead. Being, being willing, being willing to talk, being open to talk. About? Our faith. Our faith. Sometimes it's a it's, uh, work environment where you just say something simple, like I'm going to church, or, mm -hmm. or um, in my faith, they can open the door. Cool, thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Just treating others as you. Treating others, having concern about the neighbor, that's a big piece of being Lutheran. <laughs> what does this mean? Uh, what does this mean for our neighbor? Go ahead. Listening to others and giving comfort. Listening to others and giving comfort. Cool. Social media. Social media. That's a new way. It's the printing press of our modern day, isn't it? Okay. Go ahead. You tell the story by sharing your own dream. Wow, we've got a lot of stars in the room because this is gonna uh, you're gonna segue right into what I'm gonna talk about tonight. Thank you. So, uh, part of um, when I work with congregations, I am concerned about the great commandment. Uh, how we love our neighbor as ourself, how we care for people in need. I'm also as equally concerned about how we are a great mission church and how we live out our faith as, um, in, as in Matthew 25, go therefore and make, make disciples, um, teaching them everything I have commanded you. And so I care about how we share the faith um, I care about how we care for our neighbor. I'm equally concerned about how we share the faith, which is the why behind our caring for the neighbor. I think if uh, Lutherans culturally might have a recessive gene in one of these, uh, it might be the Great Commission piece. And there's some cultural realities for that. Uh, with a name like Wallace Slager, you might assume that I inherited my Lutheran part, but my dad married a Norwegian, um, and my grandpa was off the boat in Norwegian, um, spoke Norwegian in the home. Um, my mom grew up here in Norwegian. Um, both of her parents were immigrants. And uh, so the, Norwe the Lutheran part of my family tree came from these Norwegian immigrants. And for them, it was something that they came with, and my 
grandpa helped start a, a church in Montevideo, Minnesota, and supported it. And, um, and so it was something that came through our lineage. Now, that's not true for all Lutherans. I work for, with a number of Lutherans that that's not the story of at all. But that is a big piece of... Um, so what happens when we have congregations that have European descent roots? Um, faith has been often passed down through families, right? But we're growing into a time in our lives as a church, not just Lutheran church, but in North America where um, people don't go to church just because of the family. Or, and, and, and people go to church often because they see and experience the Holy Spirit in and through that church, um, uh, through a particular community of faith. And so one of the things that I want us to think about tonight is the why. Why is this important to us, to you, and, um, and us collectively? How do we let our light shine? I got the privilege last week. Um, I go often with mission developers to training. Last week, our training for all mission developers in the ELCA happened to be in Houston. So I went with, uh, on the left there is a picture. This is my Facebook post. Um, uh, Lauren Vignette, he is the mission developer. He's a lay person. He's a mission developer of a church called Fear No Evil. It meets in, in the South Shan neighborhood of Tacoma, and um, Lauren is a dancer. He uh, dances, and um, Fear No Evil is a dance church. Um, it's the only one in the ELCA at this time. And Lauren, um, the, the whole purpose of Fear No Evil is that it reaches out to people who are struggling and speaks a message of grace. Um, and Lauren's very clear about who he's trying to reach. He says his church is there to speak the word of grace to people who are struggling with mental illness. People who have experienced or are touched by incarceration. People who have experienced or are touched by abuse. And people who have experienced or are touched by addiction. And so every single service at Here No Evil, it only is once a church, once, once a month, because services are about three and a half hours long. <laughs> That's not the reason. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to put on dance church, uh, but there's about 120 young adults that show up. And Laura himself doesn't dance at dance church. He's giving the dance lessons. He's teaching Anne there to moonwalk. <laughs> but uh, he, 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 has a, he kind of is the MC, for lack of a better word, um, to this group, people come, and he starts every um, dance church with a recitation of Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And then he welcomes everyone. And uh, worship services are a little bit different. There's a little bit different liturgy. <laughs> yes. And people dance, and then in the middle, um, Lauren reads scripture, has everyone sit down. There's a, there's a sermon that speaks to one of those four aspects of how the gospel speaks to our lives. Um, and then there's passing of the peace. People give offering, and then they continue to dance. God is doing something new in our church. God is up to something new in the life of um, the world. There on the right, I'm standing with uh, Joan and um, Joan Nelson and Sharon Peterson. Sharon Peterson works at WCCW, um, where she uh, does provides pastoral care to women who have been incarcerated. I've been a part of a worship team who, over the past two years, has come in on Sunday nights on the fifth Sunday of the month, which is only about four Sundays a year. And uh, we provide two worship services, first for the maximum security um, folks, and the second for more minimal security. Um, it gets so full, it's different than if you've been to Living Stones Prison Congregation. It's different because as people come, um, some, it, it, when, the, when the room is full, the women have to go back to their cells. And we've had times where women have not been able to come in because we've had a packed house. But it's just been named 
as a synodically authorized worshiping community of our synod, and now we can provide worship every second Sunday of the month. And it's done in a little bit different way, but these are ways that I can work with people who are letting their lights shine in their communities in new ways. And this connects with my why, but I'm going to invite you, some of you were making comments about what was on the table. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to ask you to grab a piece of white paper on your table. The handout with nothing on it. And I'm going to ask you to fold it in four, in four, in half, and then in half again. So if my directions are clear, if you fold it, you have a piece of paper with four quadrants, right? So you have four sections. And what I'm going to invite you to do, there's pencils and maybe crayons on your table. And I want you to try to distribute those amongst yourselves. And I want you to color. I'm asking you very specifically uh, to color tonight. Maybe this is in our class. You won't be graded on your effort or your skill. Um, but I am going to ask you to color because I think there's something about how the brain works when we do something other than what we normally do. And maybe there's color in the room. Maybe we have some great artists, and that's great too. Um, but I'm going to ask you to either draw, I'm going to ask, I'm going to read a Bible story, and I'm going to ask four questions that are reflection questions. And what I'd like you to do is that I'd like you to draw a symbol or a picture when you think about the answer to each question. I'll read the Bible story first, then I'll ask four questions, and then I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. And um, you, I'd like you to draw a symbol or a picture of, of what that answer is to you. Is that, is that clear? No. My direction is clear so far? Right. You're not stuck? Bill? Can you go one more time? You want me to? Okay. One more time. You got your paper? You did that? Yep. So, I'm going to read a Bible story. Then after the Bible story, I'm going to ask four questions. I'll ask them one at a time. And I will ask you to draw a similar picture uh, representing your response, your answer. It can be a symbol. It can be stick people. It could be, uh, I'm, I'm just, ask, I'm asking you not to write. Okay? To the best of your ability. <laughs> Follow directions to the best of your ability. Okay? But, you know what? Someone mentioned grace, and there's a lot of grace here. Uh, so, the story is often known as the Jesus and the Canaanite woman, and Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman. Here it goes. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Question one. I'm going to ask you to do this silently. The Canaanite woman had faith in and spoke to the grace of God. Who has demonstrated faith in the grace of God in your life. Draw a symbol or picture
picture of that person. Number two, second question. The Canaanite woman had faith in herself that her words mattered to Jesus. Who has demonstrated faith in you and your gifts and abilities? Draw a symbol or picture of that person. Which stands 
stands for our kingdom radically uplifting mighty praise. And he was fighting his demons. So, uh, have you have someone in your life that has um, identified uh, faith in your gifts and abilities? Um, have you had someone that you've been able to identify, who has identified gifts and abilities in you? That was number two. I got out of order there. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sometimes we need people that help identify things in us that we don't see in ourselves, right? And then, um, fourth, were you able to identify a neighbor? Who'd you identify? Who? Oh, very specific. Tim, cool. Don, good. A friend? Frank, oh, you got so sorry. Cool. So you were able to identify someone very specific that you know. Cool. Good job. So, how does this relate to your why? Why, your why. And the why is, why is letting our little light shine important? Do these questions have anything to do with their life? What's your why? What's our why? What's our why about why letting our little light shine? Thinking about your own faith story? Help come up with that at all. How so? Well, someone that's trusting in my abilities builds my confidence. Uh huh. Share my story. Uh huh. Calling me, 
Uh-huh. At any time she feels comfortable, even in the middle of the night. Uh-huh. In the morning, because she's sick. So I wonder why I said, why me? So I said, well, maybe she just trusted me. Not because I'm a nurse, but maybe she wanted me to be by her side so that the fear on her would have just gone away. So uh, I told myself, okay, nice. I'm going to be there. Okay, don't be panic on what you're feeling right now. I'll be there right away. So maybe the feeling that I had with her is that she got the security or the trust that I can manage her fear and she just feel comfortable calling me anytime. That's wonderful. Thank you. So, anybody else?
for, or for dinner for you pray here or pray there? Paula's always our good. Pick her up. <laughs> <laughs>